Welcome to the Acela HHP8 High Speed Electric Locomotive. The other electric trains you can drive in Train Simulator are the Acela Express, the Series 7000 LSE, and the Series 2000. I'm using the Acela HHP8 to teach you about electric locomotives, but remember that each electric locomotive is different. In this lesson, I'll walk you through each of the main controls and gauges and show you how to start this train moving. As in all the tutorials in Train Simulator, I'll lock out the controls we're not using so we can focus on the task at hand. Let's get started. First, let's change to an external view so we can see the train from the outside. Follow the instructions written on the screen to change to external view one. Well done. The electric trains in Train Simulator get their power from overhead lines called the catenary. You can see the lines over the tracks. Let's move the camera a bit to get a closer look. First, let's spin the camera around. Now let's zoom in for a closer look. In order to get power from the lines, we need to raise the panograph. The panographs are the red metal bars on the roof of the locomotive. Raise the panograph now. Great. Notice that only the rear panograph was raised. If we were headed in the opposite direction, the other panograph would have been raised because the trailing, or rear panograph, is always used. You'll find that the panograph has already been raised when you start most activities in Train Simulator, just as it would be in the real world. Let's go back inside the locomotive now. The engineer, who operates the train, sits in the cab of the locomotive. Take a moment to look left and right, but then come back to this central view, which is the view you'll use to move the locomotive's controls. You can see that there are quite a few controls in this locomotive. Today, we're going to focus on the most important ones. This control is the reverser. I've drawn a box around it. The reverser has three settings, forward, reverse, and neutral. Try moving the reverser to its forward position now. Great. Now, let's look at a few more basic controls. This control is the throttle. It sets your speed. Some locomotives have throttles with set notches. Others, like this one, allow you to move the throttle continuously. Don't move the throttle now. We'll use it a bit later in this lesson. This is the speedometer. Some locomotives have analog speedometers with needles on their dials. Others have digital speed readouts. And some, like this Acela HHP8 locomotive, have both. Next, let's talk about the brakes. This locomotive has two brake handles, one for the whole train and one just for the locomotive. Let's look at the train brakes first. This is the train brake handle. You use it to apply and release the brakes on the whole train. This is the locomotive brake handle. You use it to apply and release brakes only on the locomotive. The Acela HHP8 is the only electric train in Train Simulator with a locomotive brake, because the other electric locomotives are permanently coupled to their passenger cars. These are the air brake gauges. For detailed information about reading the gauges, refer to the help system. Here's a quick tip. The red brake cylinder needle on the right-hand dial shows how much brake pressure is being applied to the wheels. If it's at zero, the brakes are off. Let's try out the horn. Notice that the bell rings when you sound the horn and doesn't stop ringing. You'll need to turn the bell off by pressing the bell button. Good. When you approach a passenger platform, you need to keep the bell ringing until you've come to a stop. The best way to do that is to sound the horn on approach and then let the bell continue to ring. Bells are used only on U.S. locomotives. This button controls the sander. You can drop sand onto the track to help the wheels grip the rails and prevent the wheels from slipping. 
Remember that there is a limited amount of sand on board the locomotive, so don't forget to turn the sander off. All these controls, gauges, and key commands can be confusing, and you'll have lots more information to keep track of when you're trying to meet a timetable. To keep your important information organized, we've provided an operations notebook. Let's look at it now. Take a moment to look at each of the tabs. The operations notebook contains all the information you need to complete a run. You'll be referring to it often. Now let's close the operations notebook and look at one of the other driving aids provided in Train Simulator. Once you've opened a driving aid window, you can close it again by pressing the same key command that opened it, or you can click the X in the upper right corner of the driving aid window. You may have noticed that the operations notebook contains the entire timetable for your run. Another way to access the timetable is in the next station driving aid. It shows just the station you are currently in or have just left and the next station. Let's have a look. Excellent. Note that our timetable shows departure from the station at 10.05 a.m., so we have only a few moments to wait. You'll hear the conductor say, OK to proceed when the train has permission to depart. Do not move the train before you receive permission. Close the next station driving aid so you can see the cab controls better. To close the driving aid, press the same key you used to open it, or click the X in the upper right corner. OK to proceed. That's the signal. Now we can depart. Now completely release the train brake. It controls the brakes on both the locomotive and the passenger cars. Make sure to move the handle all the way to the release position. On the computer display above the brake handle, you will see the yellow All Applied sign change to a gray All Released sign when the brakes are completely released. OK, we're ready to move the train. Now, move the throttle away from you to start the train moving. And we're moving. Well done. This aerodynamic train is built for coasting. Once you get up to speed, you can move the throttle back to zero and then increase the throttle only as necessary to maintain speed. 